Hello everybody, welcome back to Gord's Corner and uh, today we're going to talk about the the new uh, Kiwana from Hoka. Um, a new shoe for Hoka in a way that it's trying to make a, an entry point for the people who have been hearing of Hoka shoes, uh, the massive stack height type shoes. Um, and they, Hoka, wanted to come try to capture a market that is maybe a little bit more gym use but they play with a little bit of running. Um, so a couple things they've done with the, the Kiwana is uh, they've put in a new foam into the midsole. Um, the foam in as far as people who are familiar with the various models of shoes from Hoka and the various densities that they like to play with and the carbon plates and those sorts of things. Um, best way I can summarize it is it's a little firmer. Um, so it's a little bit more responsive. Uh, so some of the people who like some of the lighter weight performance shoes like the Rincon, the Mach 4, those sorts of things, um, they might actually like the shoe because it's, again, hits that nice lightweight category. Um, and the firmer sole still gives it a nice responsive type uh, bounce back from, from the effect of keeping the, uh, all the energy going forward rather than going into that soft sole and then rebounding back out. Um, both the men's and women's, at least the models we brought in here, Gord's, we brought in the black white, both look uh, pretty much identical, obviously just the sizing being different. Um, and price point wise, it's a pretty reasonable price for a Hoka shoe. It's coming in at $154.95. And uh, so a few things that they've done to it. They've kept uh, this little element of the basically, I call it like a little slipper type tail. It helps pull the shoe on for ease of getting on and off. They've uh, sculpted the, um, the inside with a little bit of uh, sculpting around the Achilles notch. So it just tends to grab your heel a little bit more securely from that perspective. Um, if you look at the meta rocker type uh, sole, it's got a very pronounced rocker type look. What this means is basically <clears throat> when your foot comes down and gets into the mid stance phase and goes toes off, the shoe's just gonna roll a lot more smoothly underneath your foot. So it's gonna feel a little bit more fluid. Um, you'll see th the reference to the swallow tail on the back end of the shoe. If you look at it this way, it's basically extended off the one side. A lot of the shoes they have it on both sides. Um, I think Hoka's approach to this on the, the swallow tail on the one side or the lateral edge, the outside edge, is <clears throat> the people who are maybe transitioning from a traditional drop shoe, like a higher heel to toe drop. This one comes in as a five mil drop, five mils higher in the heel than the forefoot. In theory, that lower heel to toe drop is quite complementary to the people who are more of a midfoot type stride. If the person's using the shoes like a gym used shoe and they might throw it on, do some running or, oh, there's a 5K race coming up at the end of the month, I'm gonna do that. Um, that person, whether they realize it or not, um, they might start doing a little bit of heel striking. So the swallowtail, when the heel strike does happen, basically contacts the ground a little bit earlier in the, in the strike phase, and then it just transitions and rolls through the gait cycle a little bit more smoothly or more fluidly, giving the person a, a nice sort of feel for the, for the uh, transition that way. Um, again, it's not a stability shoe and such that they put a hard density or hard posting in the shoe. They do give it a degree of uh, stability recognition only because of the firmness of the shoe. So, and that firmness just can make the shoe a little bit, um, a little bit stable just because it's firm. The other thing is they still have a fairly wide platform underneath the foot, which also enhances the stability characteristic. But if you're a person who does have that tendency to, over time, the shoes start to characteristically lean in on their own. Um, again, you might want to go to another Hoka, such as the Arahi or um, the Giovati um, as well. So from that perspective, um, a good entry point type shoe with the Kiwana. Um, uh, there are a couple other color, or there's another colorway that Hoka does have. I think they, in their first launch, they pretty much went with the black white for most of the, at least most of the Canadian market. So you might see the secondary color, it's a lighter color. I'll flash the catalog so you can see the other colorway. Um, but <clears throat> the other colorway is, um, again, 
less stocked with the Canadian supplier. So it could be a few and far between. Um, weight wise, they're coming in at 237 grams for the women's and 283 grams for the men. So it's still on that lightweight category. So for a few people who want something lightweight, last time we talked um, on Gord's Corner, we referred to the uh, Saucony Convara. Um, this one would be like a hint heavier, but again, a little bit more substantial sole. Um, maybe for the person who wants a little bit more versatility with their shoe because of the wider platform, they might go this way because um, they're doing some gym use, that sort of thing. Um, that's pretty much it with the Kawana. Um, we've had the ladies a few days earlier than the men's, um, and so so far a few of the ladies have been really liking it and checking it out. Um, so if you check it check it out at your local uh, running store area, go from there. Um, that's about it for the Kiwana. Uh, feel free to uh, send Ryan a, a question if you want us to look for something else, um, and we'll do our best to answer for you. Um, hit that like button over on that side of your screen and or the thumbs up one and then hit the subscribe button over here and um, Ryan does share with me all your reviews and things like that so always looking forward to the good the bad and the ugly about our little edition of Gord's Corner thanks have a good day take care and stay well